Hi, this is Alison Hall and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation presenting case 130 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of retrograde crossing through an epicardial collateral. The patient was an elderly man with progressive dyspnea. He had a stress test positive for inferior ischemia, multiple PVCs and borderline ejection fraction. He underwent coronary angiography at an outside hospital that showed severe three-vessel coronary artery disease with uh, lesions in the LAD circumflex as well as a CTO of the second OM and the right coronary artery. The patient absolutely refused coronary bypass graft surgery and underwent PCI of the LAD at the outside facility, followed by referral to our facility for CTO PCI. These are the diagnostic images. The patient had a severe calcification and severe disease into the left anterior descending artery. There is a CTO of the right coronary artery with a distal vessel filling via septal and also via epicardial collaterals. The right coronary artery was occluded in the osteal segment. So the patient returned to us for PCI. Our plan was to perform PCI of the right coronary artery first, as the circumflex seemed to be a much smaller caliber vessel compared to the right coronary artery. The angiographic characteristics of the right coronary artery CTO, the cap was blunt, it was an aortoosteal lesion. The length appeared to be short as the right coronary was filling backwards close to the ostium. The distal vessel was of good quality and uh, the PDA was filling mainly via a large apical collateral. Based on this, our plan here was to perform undergrade wire escalation, following by retrograde through the epicardial collateral, followed by undergrade dissection reentry. The epicardial collateral seemed to be large, however, there was significant tortuosity distally at the connection with the right coronary artery. We encountered extreme difficulty engaging the right coronary artery. We had uh, eight friends femoral and seven friends radial axis. And despite using multiple guide catheters, including AL1, AL.7504, we had a lot of difficulty engaging the right. As a result, after multiple attempts, we decided to switch to the retrograde approach through the epicardial collateral. We used a teleport microcatheter and a CM blue wire to get to the collateral. And then we used the SUO03, which is the standard wire definitely for epicardial, but also increasingly for septal collaterals, to cross through this highly tortuous epicardial collateral. You can see that there were through two 360-degree loops that were successfully crossed using the SUO03 guide wire. And those loops uh, were successfully tracked using the teleport microcatheter. It went through the first loop and then through slow push it was able to navigate the second loop as well. And then once it did that there was straightening of the collateral and advancement of the wire and the teleport microcatheter. So we now have access to the distal true lumen who performed an injection showing diffuse disease in the distal right coronary artery. And then we started to work our way backwards. We had a difficult advancing wires, but eventually we were able to advance a pilot 200 to the mid right coronary artery. But unfortunately, because um, uh, we were using the radial axis and we did not have 90 centimeter long radial guides, this was a 100 guide in a picardial collateral and we ran out of microcatheter space. This is a 150 centimeter teleport. What to do next? There is one microcatheter, the micro 14, that is longer. It is 155 centimeters long. And we were able to use that one to go a little further into the right coronary artery. We then switched for the gladius mongo that was advanced all the way to the right coronary artery, artery ostium. What to do next? Uh, we could not get the microcatheter to go further up, so we had to work undergrade, but now we had a better understanding about the course of the vessel given the retrograde gear. We tried again several guide catheters, JR4, R35, Williams, and eventually the seven French JR4 seemed to work the best, and we were able to engage the vessel and advance a pilot 200 through the teleport microcatheter. 
engagement was challenging, but again, after multiple uh, try and fail attempts, we were able to advance uh, a guide liner to the proximal right coronary artery. And now we have undergrade equipment and retrograde equipment trying to cross retrograde. The options here are to do uh, just marker, which wouldn't work here given the subintima location, retrograde to the true lumen crossing, which didn't work here as well, or reverse cart, which is the most common retrograde crossing technique. If there is difficulty in reverse cart, which was the case in our patient, there are different ways to make it work. One option is to change the balloon, get a larger balloon that uh, can facilitate um, retrograde crossing. The other one is to change the retrograde wire, uh, put a guide extension to make a different target for the retrograde wire, or change the location of the attempted uh, reverse cart. And all of these techniques were actually applied in this case. Um, we have here an undergrade knuckle. We tried to cross retrograde, but didn't work. We advanced a balloon in the mid-right coronary that didn't work out, up to 3.0 millimeter balloon that didn't work out as well. We decided to change the location of the re-entry, re so we used the inch warming technique. And using that, we were able to advance the guideliner uh, from the undergrade all the way down to the distal right coronary artery. And now we do have a better target for our retrograde equipment. So what we effectively did here is switch to what's called an extended reverse card, going distal to the occlusion to re-enter close to the distal cap. And after doing that, we were able to advance a retrograde pilot 200 all the way into the undergrade guideline. This was trapped and then externalized an R350 guide wire, dilated and placed multiple trigluting stents all the way to the right coronary artery ostium, providing uh, a nice result with some residual disease distally that was covered with another trigluting stent using intravascular ultrasound guidance. A nice result was achieved with uh, TM3 flow in the large right coronary artery, 2.5 gray, 300 ml of contrast. The patient had essentially resolution of his symptoms after the procedure. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that for aorto-osteal CTOs that are hard to engage, using a primary retrograde approach may be needed for crossing. The SUO3 wire is very useful for crossing through highly tortuous collaterals, as was this epicardial collateral in our case. Short guides are important when going through epicardials, otherwise we may run out of microcatheter space, as happened in this patient. And finally, a reverse card can be challenging, and there are different ways to make it successful, such as using a larger balloon, changing the location of the re-entry, and using a guide extension. This can lead to successful retrograde crossing and successful completion of the procedure. Thank you.